General Manager George Payton has the Denver Broncos on the right path. We take a look at why Broncos fans should be optimistic about the future of the franchise, not to mention the biggest indicator of Pat Shermer's ineffectiveness as an offensive coordinator rears its head with one specific player, not to mention Drew Locke. Sarah makes the case as well why Drew Locke should be the starting quarterback for the Broncos in the final three games of the regular season. We break that down and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Locked On NFL Network, your team every day, even though that we're coming off of a loss to where the Broncos lost to the Cincinnati Bengals at home. There's a lot of reasons when you go back, you look at where this Broncos football team is and maybe where they can be. And I, I tell you what, Sarah, uh, George Payton is a big, big factor of that. And real quick, Broncos country, I'm Cody Rourke, host of Lockdown Broncos, joined alongside my co-host, Sarah Benger. Both of us covered the Broncos for the Lockdown Network and Nine News. Make sure you follow and subscribe free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. You can also follow us and subscribe here on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss out on all the action. Thank you once again, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Sarah, great to see you as always, my friend. we got a lot to break down. This is going to be a jam-packed episode here today, my friend. It is, Cody. There's always a lot to talk about after a loss, right? Everybody likes to vent. Everybody likes to you know, point the fingers and see what's going on and look to the future. I feel like right now with three games left in the regular season, you, we, you're right. We have plenty to talk about. Lots of things you know, regarding the future of the team and especially, too, with what we're talking about with George Payton. I love some of the notes we got for this show. I think there's going to be a lot of good stuff for the listeners coming up ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. And first off, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with kind of the hit of the day here. And thinking back on the loss, I, I think you summed it up perfectly. Yesterday's post-game pod, I think, was the perfect vent session, you know, for you, myself, but also for Broncos country. Because Broncos fans in the YouTube comment section, or even in the live chat, they popped up and they just talked about how frustrated they were seeing the end result happen. And once again, it's just another story of, once again, the Broncos do this. The same story continues to repeat itself as it has the last five years. I understand the frustration. But, you know, with that said, I think that there's always a, another positive way that you can look at things. And when we talked about George Payton coming in as the general manager, this was essentially a year where he could observe, make moves, and set the Broncos up for the future, even though this is not necessarily his coaching staff that he handpicked. I think Broncos fans really need to think about that. He really doesn't owe anything to this current coaching staff. Now, I think that there's the evident appeal that many Broncos fans say, like, you know, what type of decision do you have to make, right? If you're going to get rid of Vic Fangio and this coaching staff, how do you keep the defense intact? You know, the way that the defense has been playing, as which obviously, as we saw, held Jamar Chase to only one catch for three yards. I mean, that, incredible. I mean, we're talking about Patrick Zertan, the, the key first-round draft pick addition by, guess who, George Payton. So George Payton has put the Broncos on the right path there for the future, and here's how. I think when we look at overall draft impact, take a look at this list. Right? you got Patrick Zertan, you got Javante Williams, you got Baron Brown and Quinn Miners, Caden Stearns, and Jonathan Cooper, all rookies this season. You know what they're doing for the Broncos? They are on the field contributing in legitimate impact moments for this football team. That right there, I think, speaks volumes, not to mention the amount of guys that are going to be back next season under George Payton. I, man, I just, I'm sitting here wondering, like, what can his draft look like this year? Like, how can he build on it? Or will the Broncos have many draft picks, depending on the offseason? I, I think his scouting expertise has been tremendously on display, not to mention with his rookies there, but Jonas Griffith. Kenny Young, Stephen Weatherly, additions that he went out to help the Broncos get better when they had injuries. And man, I tell you what, they have they have not let me down on the film. Even though the Broncos have lost, George Payton's moves have been chef's kiss. They have been, Cody. And yeah, you're right. With those inside linebackers, I feel like that's gone from a position of like, hey, the Broncos really need to prioritize inside linebacker in the offseason to uh, which guys can we even keep? You know, who, who's going to be able to stick around? Like, are we going to be able to keep multiple of these guys? Because I want to see Kenny Young back. I want to see Josie Jewell back. I think everybody likes Alexander Johnson. I'm loving what we're seeing from Jonas Griffith. So there's a, there's you went from having like, oh, man, I don't know what they're going to do beyond this season. We have no idea what we have in Baron Browning. Now your two starters are injured and out for the season. To now it's like there's like five or six guys that we could legitimately say, <laughs> let's open up this season. Not to mention Justin Sternot, who we all still, you know, hopefully believe he can still develop. 
and become a player or two for this team. So I'm with you on George Payton, especially in this first draft class. And I saw a number 59 out there this past weekend as well. So Jamar Johnson getting a little action as well, Cody, which is nice to see. Maybe didn't, maybe didn't play a whole lot, obviously, defensively with Nate Harrison sliding into Caden Stern's role from what I remember during the game. But it, it's good to see that draft class continually getting more and more involved as the weeks go along. And how smart does the pick of Patrick Sertan look right now? I mean, even considering how Zach Wilson is playing for the Jets and Trey Lance is not doing anything for the 49ers and they're playing really well. Justin Fields, obviously not doing well in Chicago, and they're going to have a coaching change. So, I mean, it's tough. To, it's impossible to say at this point, right, whether or not, oh, yeah, that's clearly that was the right call. But, man, Patrick Sertan looks like a superstar at the cornerback position, and those are really hard to find. People bagged on George Payton for saying it's harder to find a, a franchise corner than a franchise quarterback. Th that's not entirely inaccurate based on the way that you know teams have been able to just sign Tom Brady or trade for this guy or draft Justin Herbert, draft Patrick Mahomes. It, it's, it's been a little bit easier to find guys like that in recent years at, at least than it has been to find like Patrick Sertan, who you can't really name a ton of guys like that off the top of your head who are, you know, playing great corner this early in their career. So, and obviously we understand and George Payton understands the quarterback position is the most important on the field. But like you said, looking ahead with this roster and Patrick Sertan already in hold for next season, how much better is that acquisition going to look this off season with the guys that are already now on the team? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I think in hindsight, when we look at things, here's where the biggest point I want to make about George Payton in this Broncos season. George Payton has allowed this coaching staff to essentially try things their way, and he's going to make changes. Obviously, the standard not making it to the playoffs is going to be huge for the Broncos, and more than likely, that's the reality for this team right now. The way that the offense has performed the entire season is not good enough in the eyes of George Payton. He's going to make changes. Changes are going to come, Broncos country. It's not going to happen right now, and rightfully so. You're still in season. There's three games left. Changing it isn't going to change much, right? So we'll get to that, obviously, a little bit later on. But the one thing, too, I'll say this, that Broncos fans should be very optimistic about, Sarah. George Payton has stockpiled draft capital this year, next year, and a future years to give the Broncos the ability to trade for the franchise quarterback or to maneuver inside this year's NFL draft if they really, 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 really like a guy. So they have moves. They have flexibility. If we hear George Payton talk, what's one word that he always mentions? We have the flexibility to do this, to do that. Flexibility is the one word that I consistently hear from him. And so he's always looking at ways to improve this roster. And even though that the on-field product, the wins, the losses, what we're seeing right now from this Broncos team where they're sitting at currently 7-7, seven and seven, I think it's easy for everybody to look ahead at the future and say, okay, hey, you know what? With George Payton, I trust him so far based on what he's done and I think that's where a majority of Broncos country stands and and we're with you there Broncos country I think the future is very bright for this organization they are truly legitimately a play caller and a quarterback away I think from being a Super Bowl contending football team now speaking of offense and maybe getting a guy into some contention here sir we're going to talk about one player on the Broncos offense that has really revealed why Pat Shermer has failed to modernize the offense with the talent that he has coming up here in just a moment but before we do that ladies and gentlemen let me tell you about the sponsor today's episode Lockdown Broncos are good friends over there at Boost Mobile, and you listen to podcasts for the power of knowledge and Broncos football talking, you switch to Boost Mobile for the power of saving money because with Boost, you get the power of a free 5G phone so you can listen to all the latest episodes of the Lockdown Broncos podcast first thing in the morning as your first listen of the day with the power of three unlimited data lines for 30 bucks a month per line so your family can harness all that brain power too. And the power of one of America's largest 5G networks so you can do it all at the speed of 5G. And with all that money that you'll save and all that knowledge that you'll gain when we talk about the Denver Broncos, just how powerful will you become? Switch to Boost Mobile and find out today and get a free Samsung Galaxy A32 5G when you switch to one of America's largest 5G networks. More power to save Boost Mobile. Free phone limited to new customers and one per line. Additional restrictions apply. Offers coverage not available everywhere or for all phones or networks. See BoostMobile.com for details. And our good friends over there on location, Sarah. Super Bowl 56 is less than 100 days away, and it's going to be in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. And on location, the official hospitality partner of the National Football League is the only place where people can score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. You get to select your exact seats, and you get to choose from elite experiences that feature an exclusive pre 
pregame celebration with NFL legends, five-star LA hotels, and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. You can visit on location, exp.com slash SP56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. That's on location, exp.com slash SP56 or search Super Bowl on location. Sarah, I can't wait for the Super Bowl. I'm going to be there in Los Angeles. And, you know, thank you to our good friends over there on location for that. Check it out today if you want to take you and your family to a trip to the Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles in just under 100 days with on location. All right, Sarah, as we open up in the second half on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, I think it's super important that we get to a key talking point. Going back and being able to digest the Broncos loss to the Cincinnati Bengals, I got a phone call from one of my buddies, a guy I played football with, a guy that I used to coach with, Jared Frazier. He's also an avid listener of the show here, a good friend of mine. We were talking because he was at the game, and, and he's a coach, and, and he's got a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience as well. And it never really dawned on me. I don't know why I've never thought of this, and this is just where like we, we consume so much football content. We do all this. Sometimes we overlook things. The Broncos do this one thing on the offensive side of the ball, Sarah, that you know it, it looks nice when you watch it. And but we're not seeing any results from it. It's the jet motion, right? We're seeing Jerry Judy consistently used as a motion guy. But the reality is, I go to think of it, and, he, and Jared brought it up. He said the Broncos haven't run jet sweep one time this season, and he's right. They haven't run jet sweep. And ideally, we thought that this type of motion would be something that KJ Handler would be using. Obviously, he's out for the season with the ACL. But all of a sudden, you're using Jerry Judy as this decoy, and he's not being involved in the offense. And it's almost by design here by Pat Shermer. So. The decoy not working. Them not running jet sweep is a big indicator of it. So you know what happens, Sarah, usually from a defensive coordinator's perspective. If there's jet motion coming to you, the nickel defender or the outside guy, he's supposed to attack it upfield. He's supposed to attack it to where that guy can't get to the outside edge there. Teams don't respect the Broncos doing that. And I think a lot of that falls on Pat Shermer. And I think that for Pat Shermer, it's his attempt to make the offense look modern. It's just window dressing. But it, it's not actually a modern style of offense. He's just throwing these things in to make it look like he's modernizing it. This is a huge issue. And I think Jerry Judy has every right to be frustrated as well. And Eli Apple, pound sand, slappy. I mean, you didn't do nothing against Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy is consistently getting open. The Broncos couldn't get him the ball. But he wants to get on Twitter and mouth off. I just had to get that in there. Eli Apple's a pretty funny guy. He, got, he also got beat pretty bad on the Cortland Sutton play, too, you know, where Cortland didn't go up to the top shelf and get that ball. So I think, you know, with Jerry Judy, Cody, it's super, super frustrating to watch. You know, like you said, he's become a decoy for the offense. That's bull. You know, I mean, four, like we mentioned in the post game, four targets, zero catches, zero yards, no carries on any jet sweeps. I mean, that's, it's a huge, huge mistake from Pat Shermer. And it's a total indictment on his time as offense. I mean, when we look back at this and I assume, you know, at the end of the season, because people are asking if Pat Shermer will still be fired, you know, in our mentions on Twitter, and that's not going to happen until the season's over everybody. But, but, you know, when we look back on the Pat Shermer era, I think that this is one of the things that we'll remember the least fondly of all is the way that he didn't use Judy. I mean, the fact that Judy has no touchdowns this season is, is embarrassing enough. The fact that he's going a game without a single reception, it's absolutely inexcusable. It can't happen. You have him, like you said, he was running wide open a lot in this game. So it's just the inability of the quarterbacks to get Jerry Judy the ball. And, and, and you can't necessarily just force feed everybody in every game. We want to see the Broncos get 10 targets to all of these weapons on every single game. We just we know that's not going to happen. But with a guy like Jerry Judy, you've been sending him in motion so much this year. Get him the ball on a couple jet sweeps. Get him the ball on some you know just quick swing out and they've done that a couple of times with some success so I, I think that that with Pat Shermer it, that's the most frustrating aspect to me is that he just continually it, how do you wipe a guy like Jerry Judy out of the game I mean it's way different with what we talked about with Jamar Chase one catch for three yards that was a player wiping him out of the game when your offensive coordinator wipes a player out of the game plan because he's using him as a motion decoy and trying to open up the run game and this that and the other Jerry Judy's running three yards behind the line of scrimmage at the sideline on a critical passing play and that's happening multiple times throughout the game and that just simply cannot happen you can't take one of your best playmakers out of a play when a play needs to be made no you're spot on with that too and this is where I'm going to go as well right and I feel like what we're going to hear from Pat Shermer this week let me project it here when he meets with the media I believe it's on Thursdays if I'm not mistaken before the Broncos play their next opponent 
I think what we're gonna going to hear is, you know, we, you know, we we got Cortland Sutton the ball, we targeted him, right? But you know, Jerry Judy's gonna be brought up, and he's like, you know, well, we got Cortland the ball, like as it's an excuse as to why they didn't get Jerry the ball is because they were looking to get Cortland the ball, and that's the thing with some of these old school coaches. I think this is where Pat Shermer kind of falls into that category, Sarah. There's coaches out there, a lot of them, right? And this is maybe why they have jobs every other year in the National League, whether it be head coaches or coordinators, but they're constantly transitioning. At some point, you have to stop asking yourself, what's wrong with the team that I'm going to? And you need to start asking yourself, what's wrong with what I'm doing as a play caller? And this is where Pat Shermer is in. You know, he's called some good games this year, but it's been widely inconsistent, just like the entire Broncos offensive product that we've seen on the field, widely inconsistent. Too much talent to be as inconsistent. But for him, the old school coach's mentality of being too stubborn, and this applies to several coaches that the Broncos currently have. They want to do it their way versus adapting to what their team's strengths are, what their players' strengths are. And I don't know how many times we've sat on this podcast there and have said the Broncos offense needs to tailor make themselves to the strength of the team. And that's what they did in the last couple of weeks. Look, they become a running football team, which that is their identity. That's what their strength should be. But you still need to be able to pass the football when you have the talent, you have the weapons that the Broncos do. That is an issue there. And you mentioned it. Pat Schirmer's not going to get fired this season, barring something drastic. There's three games remaining. They're not going to make any changes now because then you're putting that workload on somebody else that is going to run the same exact offensive system. It's not like you're installing a brand new offense once Pat Schirmer is gone. You're running the same system. And as we saw with Mike Shula the one time, he didn't have the same exact flow that Pat Schirmer did, and the Broncos' offense looked worse. So, Denver's going to unfortunately have to stick it out with Shermer the rest of the season, but I imagine that change will be made, Sarah. And I know Broncos country will be happy, and then we'll get into the whole conversation about what the next offense coordinator for the Broncos will need to bring to the table. That's going to be a fun future episode here on Lockdown Broncos. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up here in just a moment, Sarah and I are going to go back and forth. We're going to discuss whether or not Drew Locke should finish the season for the Denver Broncos at quarterback. We give reasons why. We give reasons maybe why not. We come up with that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about the other sponsor today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. That's our good friends over there, BetOnline.ag. And BetOnline has you covered all season long with more props, more odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues. The march to the playoffs and bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season so head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit all you got to do is use promo code locked on to receive your bonus from basketball football nhl boxing and ufc right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts all right, Sarah, as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Once again, thank you so much, Broncos Country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. It means the world of both Sarah and myself. You can now leave reviews on Spotify if you're listening to us on that platform. If you can go and leave us a five-star review if you love the show, it would mean the world to Sarah and myself. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts and you have yet to leave a review, please go there, write a review, leave us five stars if you love the show. Tell us why you tune in every single day. Leave your Twitter handle in the review, and you'll be entered into any future contest giveaway that we have here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Sarah. Question here, my friend. Should Drew Locke be the Broncos' starting quarterback the rest of the season? Let's dive into maybe the whys, the why nots. Let's open up to you. I know, and beforehand, Broncos country, I know that there's going to be a majority of you that get pissed that we're talking about this, but here's the deal. It's the reality of the situation when we look at the lens of the Broncos with three games remaining. We have to look at all the options here. Do you look at Drew Locke? Do you look at going back to Teddy Bridgewater once he clears concussion protocol? If he does, or do you let it rip a little bit? We'll, uh, we'll talk about that here, but I'm going to let you open it up, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. And just we just have to give this disclaimer. Of course, like I've been I've been on all levels of this Drew Locke roller coaster all throughout the season, you know, calling for him to be the starter before the year, calling him to be the starter over Teddy, calling for Brett Rippon to be the backup because Drew Locke had such a bad outing his last time out. So, yeah, we get it. This is the ebbs and flows of a season, people. This is not projecting perfectly throughout a year. We're rolling with the the flow here. We're going with the flow. And right now, as far as Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke is concerned, of course, the Broncos sent out a, an update that, that Teddy is doing okay. He's now entered NFL's concussion protocol. But thankfully, I mean, for as far as we know, he avoided any major spine neck injury, things like that. So that's great news to hear. 
On the other yeah. hand, Cody, as just a fellow human being, I can't help but be a little concerned for Teddy Bridgewater for the fact that he's now had multiple concussions this season, multiple concussions within, what, 10 weeks of each other, yeah. which is very concerning. So I think definitely from that vantage point, you've got to say, look, there's three games left in the season. You've done enough to probably get another contract from another team anyway. So we're going to roll with Drew the rest of the season, let you stay healthy. You don't want to diminish his value any further. Obviously, you don't want him to get hurt again at taking another hit, you know, getting another hit to the head. That would be very, very scary. So from just that vantage point, I think Drew Locke should be the starter for the final three games of the season. But then you start looking at the way the offense was moving the ball with him out on the field on Sunday against the Bengals. And that Bengals defense was absolutely shutting down the Teddy-led offense. And then when Drew came onto the field, Cody, it seemed like as they were testing their defensive backs vertically, like you mentioned in yesterday's show, it seemed like as they were testing the field vertically through the passing game, the running game was really opening up underneath. And that was giving the Broncos opportunities to have a way more balanced offensive attack. Even when you look at some of the play, like the Cortland Sutton pass interference, I was called on, on Eli Apple, or I think it was Eli Apple. Yeah. When that pass interference was called, that allows you to continually just keep your playbook open because now the threat of throwing downfield is there with Teddy Bridgewater the last month, two months, I don't know, most of the season, right? It hasn't been there. So with Drew Locke, you at least have the threat. And of course, you also have the threat of the turnover, which is what he did on that crucial drive. And you could you could argue until you're blue in the face about whether it was Drew Locke's fault, whether it was Pat Shermer's fault for calling the play. The reality is both of the guys are at fault on that play for, you know, Pat Shermer for giving him the option to keep the ball. And, and second of all, Drew Locke for not taking care of the ball. It was just a bad, bad play all around after a really, really good sequence, I felt like by the Broncos offense. So to me, Cody, the way the offense moved the ball against the Bengals with Drew Locke under center, I feel like that gives you the opportunity to at least open up the playbook a bit more going forward into these divisional games. Whereas with Teddy Bridgewater, you have number one, the concern about his physical health, you know, and specifically we're talking about his brain, which is a, of, of serious concern. I, I don't think that yeah. can be overstated. And of course it's Teddy's body and his, and his, you know, every it, it's his decision ultimately whether or not he comes back. And if he does come back, the Broncos have to clear him. But to me, Cody, it's a no brainer. You've got three games left. You've got a real opportunity to see what Drew Locke can do for you the, the rest of this season. See if you might, you know, be able to keep him around for next season as your QB two option, or just kind of a fail safe option. He's obviously still under contract. I'm interested to know your thoughts too on this because obviously the topic of drew lock is about as polarizing as it gets in broncos country so him being around another season you know I, it'll be fascinating to see no oh, you know i and that's that's exactly it look drew's still under contract for the broncos and the only reason he won't be on this team is if the team decides to trade him away and, and that's the reality i don't think the team is going to release him but i also think it goes back as well look and i think george payton recognizes that drew came in this offseason he worked his tail off but the reality of this decision for them to go with Teddy really came on the coaching staff. It was Pat Shermer. And even though we've, you know, games where we saw Teddy struggle in spurts, the coaching staff had no confidence in Drew Locke. And there's times, as you mentioned, when he got thrown into action due to an injury to Teddy against Baltimore, you know, or against the Chargers for a brief moment of time, we saw him make mistakes, you know, and a lot of that goes to not getting game reps. And Vic Fangio even said, like, we got to do a, a better job of giving him more game reps. And even this week, he said, look, we still haven't been able to find a way to give him reps, but you have to prepare your backup quarterback, right, for any kind of situation. Now, Teddy, sometimes he held the ball a little too long. The thing with Drew Locke is just the inconsistency. I think everybody Everybody agrees he's got the arm strength to test downfield and Sarah I think you make a great point being able to open that up a little bit and going back to the Bengals game specifically the Broncos had a very difficult time running the football well against Cincinnati and then when Drew came in as you mentioned being able to test the ball downfield Tim Patrick catching that touch and all of a sudden the Broncos go up in this game the defense, when they got back on the field, they are like, okay, hey, we have to respect the pass down because these guys are going to test downfield more than they have when Teddy was in there. And that's what we saw from Drew Locke. Now, obviously, he's got to be more consistent and his mechanics can still work. But here's the thing with Drew. He's got more time to develop. He really does. He's a second-round draft pick, and, and really, you don't want to waste him. And I think it goes back to an important point. This is something that John Elway's regime as GM really struggled with, developing quarterbacks. You know, 
Granted, you get Peyton Manning. That's fantastic. But while you had Peyton Manning, you had Brock Osweiler on the roster, you just still need to find a way to develop that guy. And then the Broncos draft selection of Paxton Lynch. Don't even get me wrong. The quarterback carousel has been very rough. And it's because John Elway's regime, and I love John Elway, what he's done for the Broncos as a player and as an executive, absolutely. But I think this is a fair criticism. They have really failed to prepare another quarterback to kind of step in and take the reins. That's why the Broncos have had a new quarterback every single year for the last five to six years. And Sarah, I think it's coming to an end with George Payton. I think George Payton is going to do whatever he can to find that long-term solution, whether it be the five-year solution. I still think even in that situation, let's say the Broncos go and they get Aaron Rodgers, they get a Russell Wilson or, or whoever it may be. I think that if they go with a veteran option there, I do think that the Broncos do look to the future. Maybe they do get a guy, and they actually focus on developing that guy under a veteran guy like that. The Broncos haven't done that, and this is a chance for George Payton to get it right. It's a tough task altogether, and it looks very gloomy. It looks very tough, I think, from the outside looking in, but might as well roll with Drew Locke the rest of the season at this point you know, because you need to be able to run the ball against these other teams, like against the Raiders, the Chargers, and even the Chiefs. You need to be able to run the ball against them. And I think having the threat of a passing attack downfield, it gives you the chance to kind of maximize those opportunities. Guys like Cortland, to Jerry Judy even, Noah Fant, Albert Oak, Weibunum, as we saw in this game, and just get these guys a lot more involved in the offense. And you don't have anything to lose. Three games remaining. Why not see what you have and, and continue to let this young guy that you wasted a second-round draft pick on essentially right now to be able to develop. And I say waste and, and not in a derogatory way, but the Broncos never really have done anything to really invest in making that second round pick and Drew Locke something special because they have, I think essentially this coaching staff since Pat Shermer's come in has absolutely impacted his development in a negative way. And I just think that's the clear reality where the Broncos stand right now. But Sarah, I think it's a great talking point in Broncos country. Let us know in the comment section if the Broncos should roll with Drew Locke for the rest of the season. Let us know in the comment section down below. Let us know on Twitter at Cody Work NFL at Lockdown Broncos at Sarah Bettinger. But we appreciate you, Broncos country, jumping in and sharing your thoughts with us here on another episode of Lockdown Broncos. Tomorrow's episode, Sarah and I, we're going to be back where we're going to be answering your mailbag questions that you sent in. So go to Twitter at Cody Work NFL. Find the tweet that has will Sarah and myself tag. Send your Broncos question or thought in there and we'll address it on tomorrow's show. Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode, Lot on Broncos.